worship you in your manifested form. And there are others who worship you as the unmanifest. Echa api aksharam avvyaktam upasate. Those who worship you as that unmanifest. In the, in the previous chapters also, that supreme reality was indicated as beyond name, beyond forms, birthless, deathless, hmm? all pervading. In the Upanishad also it is indicated as satyam, jnanam, anantam, nirgunam, nirakaram, hmm? without any shape, without any form, without any qualities which is transcending all this form. These forms are only outer appearance, but the substratum of this form is uh, free from all shape and size and color and all qualities. So one who meditates on that avyakta by through shravan, manan, niridhyasan, they withdraw their attention from all names and forms and they just focus their attention on that which is the very substratum of this name and form. So avyakta upasana it is called. Not taking help of any form. Not taking help of any form is not only outward, but also becoming free of their attachment and identification with their own form, with their own body also. We cannot say God is formless, but I have a form. Because this, if you have a form, then God also has got a form. Because your body is part of Bhagwan's body. So one who meditates on you as that unmanifest. And aksharam, aksharam means uh, uh, imperishable. Those who meditate upon you as imperishable and unmanifest. Tesham ke yoga vittamaha. Out of these two set of devotees, who are the better knowers of yoga? Means better knower of your sadhana, better knower of this technique of attaining you. Arjuna wants to know. And in this world also, people always have this confusion. Should I worship God with form or should I worship God without form? There are other confusion in the minds of people that there are two gods. One is with form and another is without form. See, was, we should understand that God is only one. And, he, and this whole world is like the outer body of God. And this body is just like our body constantly changes. This body of God is also constantly changing. It's a Therefore, Bhagavan calls it Akshara uh, Purusha, or he calls it Apara Prakriti, made up of the five great elements, Akash, Vayu, Agni, Jal, Prithvi. Hmm? So, uh, some devotees or some seekers, they feel it quite comfortable to worship God in form, in some... And also we can imagine God in a particular form also of our choice and try to identify and worship God in that particular form. See, as a practice, we can imagine God in a particular form. But later on, we have to understand the entire cosmos as form of God, Vishwaroop. So, as a, in the initial stages, we can practice in our little puja room. So take a murti and all and worship it. But afterwards we should understand that the same Lord whom we are worshipping in the temple is there in the entire cosmos. The entire world is a form of God. It is very big, large. It cannot be, Bhagwan's murti cannot be put in any temple. Because it's the entire cosmos is Bhagwan. Where can you put him? There's no place to keep that murti. But for our own comprehension and understanding, we can take a replica of, or a pratik, we call it, pratik of Bhagwan, 
and worship it. Just like we, we do for our own country. Our country is very large. All of us are sitting in our country, walking in our country. So if we want to salute our country, whom sh what should we do? Where should we salute? Wherever you salute, you are saluting country only. But that attitude should be brought in our heart. That I am saluting the country. Yeah. Mm. You see a person, you salute that person, but you are not saluting the person, you salute the country. That person might feel that, oh, you are saluting me, but you are saluting the country. To make it simple, we have our flag. So when we, when we, uh, uh, when we raise a flag and unfurl it and all, and we sing the national anthem and we salute, we are invoking the bhava in our heart of the country. It is there, country is always there. But it is, that bhava is not there always in our heart. During cricket match and all it comes temporarily. So, we bring that bhava in our heart and we salute the country. Similarly, God is everywhere. But to bring that bhava in our heart we need some support. So we take the support of some symbol which we have, our scriptures have given us that this is the symbol of God. As a, like a Shiva, you have Shivalinga or like Vishnu, they are the symbols of God. They remind us of God. They, they, they form, reminds us of that cosmos. Therefore Vishnu Bhagwan is blue in color because everything Infinite is blue in color. Shiva has got all the five elements on him. He has got water, he has got fire, huh? Akash, Damru is there, sound. So Akash, Vayu, Agni, Jal, Prithvi, everything is there on his form. So he's a symbolic representation of that divinity. Hmm. Shiva means one who is auspicious. The div divinity is auspicious. Divinity is the very substratum of this world. He is the one who supports the five elements and supports everyone and everything. So that is represented by that form. Even Bhagwan's dance and all. The Tanda of Nritya is like the dance of creation and dance of destruction. So all these are required for us, for our uh, sadhana, because it becomes difficult for us to comprehend the vastness and the beauty of the Lord. We need support, we need some symbols, we need pratik. So various pratiks are there, given in our scriptures. Hmm. But uh, there are some who can, need not uh, have any pratik, they can just look at this cosmos, bring that bhava in their heart and worship everything and everyone as the very expression of God. That is called a sagun upasna. But nirgun upasna is when we withdraw our attention from all names and forms and go to the very essence, go to the very substratum of all this name and form which is free from all, all qualities and all colors and all limitation. So to worship God as that avyakta, we need to even give up our identification with our own body. You saw, na? actually it became dark light, but it did not, it was just magic I created. No, no, it became dark. So, avyakta upasna is to shift our attention from the world and shift it to the very substratum of this world, the support of this world. So, the support of the world is support of my own body also, support of my own mind and my own thoughts. So, to feel the presence of that being and identify with that being, is that avyakta upasana. So this uh, upasana or meditation on, on that formless, uh, qualityless divinity. So these are the twofold paths mentioned in our uh, scriptures. So here Arjuna, after listening to Bhagwan, 
he wants to know that who are the better knowers of uh, this path, who are the better knowers of yoga. So, evam satata yukta ye bhakta stvam paryopasate ye cha api aksharam avvaktam tesham ke yoga vittamaha. Who are the better knowers or which path is better? Which path should I follow? Which is a better path? Should I do saguna upasana or should I do nirguna upasana? Should I do unmanifest uh, upasana of that unmanifest or the manifest? And always there are great mahatmas who have come into this world. They have given this various path. Some have uh, focused more attention on the sagun upasana. And some talk about the nirgun nirakar. They say don't worship any form or name and all. Bhagwan is formless, nameless. Just shift your attention from all these names and form and worship him as the very substratum of all these names and forms, as free from all color and shape. She like sugar. What is the nature of sugar? Can anyone tell? Very good, sweet, very intelligent, yes. So sugar is sweet. But sugar is also crystalline. Sugar has also some different shape. We can look at sugar as a nice, uh, like uh, that square, like they put nice in, in the in the tea and all sugar cubes. So it has got nice. We can have nice shapes and size and all. But the essential nature of sugar is sweetness. So to there are two types of worship of sugar. One is to worship sugar with its various shapes. And other is to worship sugar as sweetness. And if you understand that sweetness of sugar, then even when the shape is not seen, like you put it in a water and mix it or in nimbupani and all, you don't see the sugar, but you know sugar is there. But if you are stuck to some shape, you will say, there is sugar nahi hai, because I don't see the cube. But if you understand the nirgun nirakar form of sugar, then you will know that it pervades everything. That which is sweet is pervaded by sugar. Similarly, God in form and God without any form, even in the form, the same Lord divinity is there pervading, but he is also expressing as form. But uh, uh, devotees who want to worship him without form, they shift their attention from the form and go to the very essence. And what is the essence? God is as Sat, Chit, and Ananda. Pure existence, pure consciousness, and pure bliss. So these two types of devotees, or two paths are there. Which is better? Who are the better knowers of yoga? Please tell me. So Bhagwan now replies. So the reply to this question itself is this entire twelfth chapter so let us begin shri bhagavan vacha maya veshamano yemam nitya yukta upasate shraddhaya parayo petaha Te me yukta tamamataha Maya veshamano yemam Nitya yukta upasate Shri Bhagavan Vacha Bhagavan now replies directly to Arjuna he says here, Arjuna, ki mai aveshya manaha ye maam nitya yukta upasate. Those seekers who worships me, here worships me means saguna roop. When Bhagavan is using the word me, I, here, he means the vekta form, the saguna roop, the vishwa roop, which he had shown to Arjuna. 
So he says that those devotees who worships me with faith, Shraddhaya Parayo Petaha, with supreme faith, Te Me Yukta Tama Mataha, according to me, they are the best. They, are, they excel. They are the best. First he talks about the Sagun Upasana. Then he will talk about Nirgun later on. But here he tells Arjuna that those who worship me in my this form, Virat, Vishwarup, see me in everything and everyone, and they are dedicated to me, they are, they are very good, they are the best. But how they are worshipping? Mai Aveshya Manaha. So there are certain important factors which we should keep in mind. Maya Vesha Manaha. Mai Aveshya Manaha. Mana means mind. Mind Aveshya. Entering me or mind totally engrossed with me. Mind totally obs obsessed with me. One who worships me with their mind completely placed in me, obsessed by me. Obsessed may not be a very good word. Uh, totally, what you call, identified with me. Mai avishya manaha. Those whose mind are in me. Mean tuned to that divinity. Not that worshipping, they see only... Uh, see, when we look... We, uh, like for example, we are in our, this, our country, wherever we see that thought is there that I am in India, I am in my country. So whatever place we go, wherever we meet, we have that in the background. Our mind is there. If we go to a new land, new place, new country, that thought is not there. Okay? The place might look similar. You might see a lot of Indians there also hanging around. But you know somewhere in the heart that this is not my country. I am somewhere else.